Woke up this morning thinking I'm about those summer days. Best friend got caught up when I stayed in Douglasville. I'm a cousin drama and I want to leave my better. All right, y'all. What's good? What's up? I just re just now, right? I had I was just like going to a deep dive. I was thinking like I remember last video or shootings. I was thinking like, what if like some dude was under me? Like, no, hold up, pause, pause. Under the apartment, under me, and just shot a gun because he thought I was shooting. He said, like, pow, and shot me up, and I don't have my phone on me. And my phone's in the other room. I'm like, fuck, I just got shot, and I'm just right here dead, trying to crawl to my phone, bleeding out. I'm going to die. I'm sorry, that was a little too dark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't mean to get that dark, but... Oh, that just popped in my head. I was like, fuck, that been the scary. That been like... I don't know, I was thinking like a movie script or something like that. But like... He doesn't like die. Like, he just gets shot in his ass. And he has to explain to everyone. It's like a comedy... Oh, yeah, he has to constantly keep explaining to people. Yes, I got shot in my ass, okay? The neighbor shot me in my ass. I mean, the neighbor trying to help him out so he, he don't get in trouble. And then uh, building this bond throughout the whole movie. And then, you know, at the almost end, fuck you, fuck you. They both break apart. And then he's like, F y'all. They don't like each other no more. And then they come back together last, one last time and end up being friends for life. Look, I don't know. I, I, I think of plots. Think of movie scenes, scenarios, and somehow I write it down. So, yeah. That being said, let's get into the video. Hip hop jewelers, the biggest scams in hip hop. Scammers. No, scammers, yeah. Stay tuned to find out more. Was there, was there a single purchase where you're like, I can't believe I just spent that much money on that? Yeah, or man. Or a credit card bill that you got when you're staring at that bill and going, like, I can't you know, believe how you much know I got. You know, you got the most money that I wish I could get back, Jacob. Jacob the jeweler. Jacob the jeweler, man. I, I, I spent over. Almost a million dollars with Jacob over the years. Spent a million in jewelry. How many of these watches have you know have these guys sold to people that didn't catch it, like me or Lil Baby? Lil Baby wouldn't have caught it if he didn't Instagram it. Right. If he never Instagrammed it, he'd be sitting there with his forty dollar watch, thinking it's worth half a million. Isn't it? That's yeah. Making a lot of noise, man. That's hollow. <laughs> Yo, you just never heard. You just never had a lot of chains on top of each other. Anybody, any rapper in the game that wear their chains on top of each other, they gonna do like that. I'm sorry, no matter who it is. From that Migos, sound real to you, Envy? They gonna do that. Anybody chains I don't know. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> they had you on that fake watchbusters.com. Yeah, plenty before. of times, but right now this is real though. Right now, if there's any genre that has diamonds built into its DNA, it's hip hop. Since Slick Rick's early days of displaying decadence to the crazy creations that Ghostface used to sport in the Down of the Bling era, jewelry purchases are nothing new in the game. In truth, it's become such an accepted part of the culture that even before an MC has truly accomplished anything, the lure of the Diamond District can be too strong to resist. As Kanye once famously put it on Touch the Sky, I went to Jacob an hour after I got my advance, I just wanted to shine. But while many of us once stared at these larger-than-life figures and assumed that every gram of diamond, platinum, and gold that they'd purchased was as legitimate as they come, the darker underbelly of the jewelry game has gradually made its way to the surface. At one stage, the culture of flossing in hip-hop was previously thought to be on life support when in 2009, the Wall Street Journal posted an expose on how the recession and changes in the music industry had melted rappers' ice and led them to look for cheaper alternatives. A lot of these rappers simply don't have the money for the real stuff anymore, proclaimed Beverly Hills jeweler Jason Arashiban said at the time. It's to the point where they are wearing imitation jewelry, and that's ridiculous. But as platforms such as YouTube and SoundCloud became star factories and hip-hop ascended to the rank of the world's most popular genre, flexing your diamonds returned with a vengeance, and soon, every rapper with even a regional hit was splashing out on signature pendants, bust-down diamond watches, iced out grills, and more. And once again, a new generation of impressionable hip-hop lovers took their extravagant purchases and claims of massive spending sprees at face value. But with the rise of social media, these rappers' purchases are under more scrutiny than ever before. I'm getting on the stone, bro. I'm getting on the stone, bro. Nah, man, come on. Where'd come you get on. your jewelry from, dog? Um, nah, bro, nah, hold on. And as it has become clear, fakes are littered all over in today's marketplace. In today's landscape, jewelry like a label pendant piece are such important status symbols that there are even fake chains being made to allow struggle rappers to fake a cosign from their favorite crew such as Lil Baby's 4PF or 21 Savage's Slaughter Gang. But while these fakes were being sold on sites like eBay or Alibaba, there's a lot of proof that even if you think you're going somewhere trustworthy, things are not always what they seem. And now rappers are becoming more vigilant than ever. 
stop buying all this jewelry without knowing what you're doing, Lil Durk warned his fellow artists in September of this year. A lot of this stuff fake, and some is overpriced. Get one jeweler and stick to them. I'm telling you, y'all gonna be when the truth come out. With counterfeits flooding the market, a whole online subculture dedicated to detecting and exposing fakes has sprung up. Most notably, IG account Fake Watchbusters has outed countless famous MCs and athletes for sporting counterfeit goods. Just three days after Durkio's warning to upcoming rappers, one of the most infamous examples of a rapper being finessed by jewelers came to light. When Lil Baby showed off the 400,000 Patek Philippe watch that he'd worn as a part of his Met Gala fit on Instagram, fans and fake watchbusters alike were quick to tell him that it wasn't the real deal. Within hours, Lil Baby placed Raffaello in. Mm. I don't like jewelry like that. I get some Amazon watches. Random calls like and offers. Hello, built in spam blocker. Now I can't soak up the sun in peace. Hello, Google Fire. A phone plan that can Shout out to Google for giving us this You need the right gear to get the job done I can make my Gear that's maintained by pros Okay I Gear that's shipped to I hate this by YouTube They make it where you have You can't and skip The outlet that sold him the timepiece on blast now, at Raffaello & Co, y'all know better than to sell me, of all people, a fake or anything that could be called a fake, he wrote on Instagram. I stand on my name the same way y'all should. Ain't no such thing as a mistake when that money get involved. Suddenly faced with bad publicity, the owners issued a statement which claimed that I personally would never knowingly sell him or anyone else anything that is not 100% authentic. I have known Lil Baby for a while and there's nothing fake about him, especially his jewelry and watches. I want to personally apologize to Lil Baby for what has transpired. Raffaello & Co took immediate action to rectify this. We pride ourselves in being an honest business and will take great care to make sure nothing like this ever happens again. But despite their assurances that this was a one-time oversight, Vlad TV suggested that this wasn't an isolated incident and detailed his own run-ins with r &Co. So I want to take a quick break to thank our friends at Skillshare, a unique service that enables Shout creators to, to turn their dreams into reality. Taking the knowledge and know-how to the general public, Skillshare offers thousands of classes that will provide you with the tools to make headway with your chosen craft. Whether it be learning how to rap, make beats, or edit music videos, Skillshare has you covered. In fact, we leveled up by finding out how to mix this video's music with the legend Young Guru. Responsible for sculpting the sound of some of Jay-Z's most legendary tracks, the famed engineer makes the secrets of the pros more accessible than ever before. So what you waiting for? The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and access to their massive learning library. Head over to Skillshare and start your journey now. Let's get back to the video. I actually had a bad experience with the same company. I had actually traded in a rose gold Hublot King Power watch. Beautiful. You know, we did a deal where I gave him that watch and he gave me a Rolex presidential in yellow gold. When I went to go get it appraised and looked at, you know, for my insurance and so forth, we come to find out that one of the links on the back of it was rose gold instead of yellow gold. And then we come to find out that the actual, you know, glass on the watch wasn't even Rolex glass. So I had to spend a few thousand dollars to get this watch back into its original shape. How many of these watches have, you know, have these guys sold to people that didn't catch it like me or Lil Baby? Lil Baby wouldn't have caught it if he didn't Instagram it. If he never Instagrammed it, he'd be sitting there with his $40 watch thinking it's worth half a million. Make no mistake. Rafael and Co. aren't the only culprits here. In fact, when you look at nearly every major outlet that hip hop has helped popularize, it has been accused of scamming to some degree. Since the early 2000s, the world of hip hop and jewelry have been closely intertwined and led a lot of salesmen to have personal relationships with rappers. And while for the famed Jacob the Jeweler, who ended up doing two years in prison due to claims that he laundered money for the BMF crew, it all ended disastrously for the most part. They're making money hand over fist, and in some cases, doing it all with products that some claim aren't what they say they are. Among the most famous West Coast jewelers, Ben Baller, the go-to guy for everyone from Kanye to Tyler the Creator and Nas, was accused of being a scammer by DJ Academics. And moreover, Act claimed he isn't the only one. While you have preyed on the young black artists who have came up, you've overpriced jewelry by hundreds of thousands of dollars when they could have used that money to feed their family or done other things with it. You've preyed only on rappers. You don't prey on nobody else. You're not over there trying to get the Wall Street you only prey on African-American rappers who just got a big advance check with what they think is theirs. Ben Baller is nothing but a scammer, a thief, a liar, someone who is just down to finesse them. And I'll keep using my voice and my platform to let that be known. These jewelers are the biggest scammers. But you know what? There's a lot of people who scam in the hip hop, so I ain't gonna say nothing until you start talking about me. Once you start talking about me, I'll expose your scam. 
Where Act didn't go into specifics about whether his wares were fake or not, there are other figures in hip hop who go out of their way to let the world know if what a jeweler is selling isn't what it claims to be. In 2019, Young Thug claimed that Icebox, the famed jewelers in Atlanta, tried to extort him by giving him new pieces without asking for any money, only to later send him a bill in a practice that he called predatory. Despite his prominence in the field, another man whose name is not without controversy is Elia Eliante, jeweler to Migos and the creator of Lil Uzi's infamous $24 million forehead diamond. Earlier this year, he felt the wrath of Sauce Walker, who claimed that the famous dealer was very much entrenched in the practice of selling CVD diamonds. Oh no, you did not jump in my diamond business. Eliante, you high BB diamond scamming artist. That's why the rest of them jewelers be on your carbon vaccinated CVD diamond selling. First of all, let's just make this clear. See, I take off my uh, Quavo and Amiga. I, 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 got, I got a relationship with them. They're like my brother. You! You been on my DM on my still in my jewelry style for four years, uh, and I say, like, don't you play these games. You, you wanna know why Uzi don't put you on that little baby don't put you because your diamonds is fake. As soon as they go to another jewel and they put it in that machine, that x-ray machine, they show you these are CBD diamonds, carbon vaccinated diamonds. Rather than being alone in the allegations of this practice, Johnny Dang, otherwise known as TV Johnny, has since been dogged by claims that he did exactly the same thing by a former employee. But where most of these claims have come from outside the industry, there is one shadowy figure that's all too happy to let anyone know that's asking in on what goes down in the fake jewelry game. Known as Raheem Dejula, he's since made a side hustle for himself, exposing the ins and outs of how much money he makes off fake jewelry, and in one case, which rapper is purchasing it from him. Um, I've had a couple of uh, customers that I really don't want to name for, for because it can, you know, it can, mess with my, it can mess with my bread. So you telling me that this knockoff right here mm -hmm. Is a million dollar business? Yeah, yeah, a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I will say this, I will say this is already out in the open. My biggest customer last year was Soldier Boy. He bought the presidential with the black face, with the white face. He got the Yap Master and I got, I got the bus down. With dealers such as Raheem serving up fakes that are undetectable to the untrained eye, the idea of copping fake jewelry has even become a topic of debate among OGs. During a clubhouse discussion that was hosted by Royster59 and sparked by the news that Chad Ochocinco had purchased fake watches to save money, NY veteran Mayno discussed how the identity crisis that artists feel and the nature of the industry could pressurize them into purchasing fake jewelry. While from Crooked Eye's vantage point, the concept of rappers and athletes making the practice of buying cheaper alternatives known might actually promote good spending habits in those who look up to them. You know what, Royce? Black, as, far as, as far as that, it's like, why even buy a replica watch and then say it's fake? Like, you, you, you better off not buying it at all, right? But I understand right. the mentality to feel or look like or or, or have to, to to fit in. Like, I want to act like this is a real Audemars. I want to... I wanna, act like this is a real uh, uh paddock and you got the money to do it but you won't do it I, it just i don't i don't get that like you might as well just go straight bed with nothing you know what i mean go get you a, a seiko or something like that do y'all think that that energy is transferring to the youth though like say, if somebody like, say yo i can afford this, this. you know straight. what i'm saying I'm but i'll be wearing off. fake i'm, I'm wearing replicas you know what i mean i'm spending less money is there a jewel in there for the youth in any of that energy it, can the youth, know. Can, the, can the youth pick, pull out and say, you know what, maybe a bunch of jewelry ain't what I need to be on right now. Because my favorite football player, he just said he ain't even wearing real jewelry. Considering that nearly every major broker in the game has at least one person claiming that they're pulling the wool over their client's eyes, it seems like if a rapper of the stature of Lil Baby can get caught out, no one is safe. Whether it's a byproduct of the dangers of being ripped off or not, it's unsurprising that there's a new crop of rappers who've decided that they should no longer value the flashiness of their financial security and shrewder investments. Case in point, the formerly iced out 21 Savage. One is because everybody wears jewelry. I outgrew it. I'm getting a little wiser and growing. So another reason is because the richest people that I've ever met in my life They've never had on jewelry. Every time I meet somebody who's very, very rich, like wealthy, I never seen them with jewelry on. And ever since I've been saving money and not spending it on jewelry, I've been getting way richer. And he's far from alone either. Recently, when asked about why he doesn't own any Cuban chains, Corday explained that the numbers Shout just don't stack up in the way that many on a higher level. Soon. If you talk with any actual like accountant yes, or person that like is an expert in finances they're going to tell you okay how much money you really have to have to buy a hundred thousand dollar cuban to like really be able to like actually afford it in in a knowledgeable and in smart way they're going to be like you need to have like 30 million 
We don't have a, a 401k. We don't have no mm. retirement plan. Encouraging as their words are, considering that the culture of showing off, no matter the cost, is still very much ingrained in hip hop, you can expect that most rappers will still be flocking to buy what they hope is real jewelry for years to come. So, as long as staying iced out remains as much of a priority for MCs as it ever was, you can bet that unless they take the time to root out the shadier dealers once and for all, we'll be seeing more scandals over fake watches and CBD dimes in the years to come. Okay. This is what I want to say. If I ever blow up as a rapper and if I want jewelry, I will start my own jewelry business or start my own little or get my shit made exactly from the mind I want. pay the people to mine my jewelry and then make sure they're taken care of and then the people that you know makes it and mold it into making nice little diamonds or whatnot you know what i'm saying like i'm not one of those people where i go to a jewelry spot and buy some chains i'm not a slave so i'm not gonna have like chains nigga i'm, I'm not a slave slaves wear chains To me, that's bug dancing. When you dance with chains and you doing all this and you need tap, tap, tap. And like tap dancing, bro. Like, who you trying to show off for? You remember in American Gangster? When Frank Lucas went up to that one man in the club. He was like, why the fuck are you wearing? What, what, like, he had this big ass puffy jacket. You wearing a fucking clown suit. You wearing a fucking clown suit. That's what it is. A clown suit. I ain't about to wear no clown suit. Make myself hot. I ain't doing nothing illegal, but I'm not wearing a clown suit. I will wear a suit, a fitted suit that fits me. I wear casual wear. I wear t-shirt and some sweatpants, t-shirt and shorts, t-shirt and pajamas. But I ain't wearing no fucking jewelry like that. I might wear the little Star Wars watch I was talking about. This is the only jewelry I own. I'll show y'all. Nigga, a Lego Star Wars watch for thirty dollars, and I'm proud of that shit. You know, you know why? You know why? Because I can say I got money saved up. I can say I'm financially smarter now. Cause I don't spend my money on stupid shit. Unless it's food, that's a different story. But I don't spend my money on like materialistic stuff, like clothes, video games. Um, what else? Shoes. Uh, sock. Well, socks. I bought some more socks and some sweatpants. Cause I needed those. Um, like, I don't spend my money on a five hundred thousand dollar phone. My phone is a two hundred and seventy five dollar phone, and I bought it, ordered it online, stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about. Like. I tell all my homies, bro, don't, don't spend your money on stupid shit. One of my homies taught me how to be better with money. That's why he my homie. Like, that, 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 that nigga rich shit, we, that shit getting old. It's getting old and played out. You might have to be the richest man in the world, but damn, bro. If you want some real authentic stuff, just go to one of them countries and find a mine. Or find a mine locally. I bet it has to be a mine in Georgia. It has to be a mine in Tennessee. A mine in... New York. It has to be a mine in LA. That dude does diamonds. Somewhere. Find the closest diamond mine to you and do what you gotta do. Then find someone to make it. And then find someone to do this and do that. I mean, you could say, my nigga, I got it out the mine. This shit real. And even if it is fake, make it look nice. Why the fuck does it matter what you wear? You shouldn't wear your wealth. As rappers, we always want to wear our wealth because we never had shit, and that's a nigga mentality. A hood, hood rich mentality. So once you have something, you want to show everybody what you have. Besides being humble and humbling yourself so you don't lose it quick as you got it. Man, where are we living? Where are we living? Be sure to like and subscribe. Shout out to all the rappers out there. That's saving their money. Shout out to all the rappers out there that take care of their families. Shout out to all the rappers out there that's financially smart. Shout out to all the rappers out there that don't have 5,000 cars, 
but they're not billionaires. No, hold up. I said that wrong. Forget all the rappers out there that have 50 million cars but aren't billionaires. Let's not shout out all the rappers that have 500 things of jewelry but aren't billionaires. Because honestly, like Corday said, he got a point. You having all these cars and all these Rolexes and all these chains on, that shit expensive. You have to get insurance for it. You have to do this. You have to do that. And looking at car prices, my nigga, you have to have millions to get all them cars fresh off the lot. And your cars go down in value. I remember I, my dad and I was watching a video from a Vi show. He was saying, once you get off that lot, a brand new car, 10000 off the top of value. Just driving it off. Just about up to towards 10000 depending on how good is the car. What type of brand it is, I'm saying. That's not a good investment. Unless you're collecting classics, and then that's different. But still you have to pay insurance for it. And this and that. And it's just too many bills, bro. You can make your life simple. Get a car for you, your family, and a starter car for your kids. And call it a day. If you want to have like every day, you know, if you want to have a nice car collection, have the money. I ain't saying you can't have it. Some people love cars. I just say be very smart with your finances because you go broke. You're going to be fucked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, didn't, I, I don't mean to, everyone that does do that, I don't mean to like talk shit towards you. I just, I just want y'all to know like I'm coming from a real place. I'm not trying to be like y'all ain't shit. Cause some dudes be like that. I'm not trying to be like, I'm just trying to tell y'all, hey, I care about y'all. Like, all these rappers out here, y'all my brothers, bro. Like, without y'all, I wouldn't be doing this. It's about every rapper in the past 20 years. Without y'all, I wouldn't be here. Because I would have no motivation to keep going. Even the people that fell off. Like, all y'all keep me going. I'm an offspring of a lot of rappers. Y'all be sure to like and subscribe. Shout out Atlanta. Oh, shout out Atlanta. 1996. Um, Olympics. Peace. Are you the poet?